I'd like to call to order this meeting of the planning board. Planning board. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The town of Burlington will be holding the August 19th. August 19th. <clears throat> <laughs> September 16, September 60 meeting of the planning board is a hybrid meeting due to the expiration of the state of emergency that was issued due to COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 virus um, as of March 12th, 2020. Please note that the option for remote participation via WebEx is being provided as a courtesy to the public. This meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Um, for those seeking to participate remotely, you can do so via the following. Um, go to townofburlington.webex.com. The meeting number is 179-815-4200, and the meeting password is 1645. The meeting is also being broadcast on the BCAT government channel, which you can find on Comcast Channel 99. RCN channel 15 and Verizon channel 41. Um, it's being streamed on Facebook Live and via the B, via the BCAP Facebook page. Um, the public will be able to make comments during the hearing during the time for public to comment. Questions can be asked via WebEx, the WebEx chat function, Facebook, and the Facebook Live chat function. All persons wishing to ask a question or make a comment must identify themselves first. Thank you. Uh, we have some uh, 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 we have some items being continued off this week's agenda. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chairwoman, I'd like to make a motion to take item 8E out of order for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item E is a continued public hearing application for approval approval of the, for the definitive subdivision plan for Redmond Street. Murray Hills Incorporate, Incorporated is the applicant. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to continue these matters to the planning board meeting of October 7th, 2021, as requested by the applicant and email dated September 15th, 2021. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Uh, let's move on to citizens' time. Uh, you know, uh, for everyone's knowledge, citizens' time is for anyone. You don't have to be on an agenda. Um, you know, if you have something you'd like to approach the board with, feel free at any point in time. Um, you know, and, and we look forward to hearing from everyone. You know, our agenda isn't we're civil servants. We're here to serve the community. So if you're not on the agenda, sir, uh, citizens time is that time for you to, to come forward and speak to the board. Um, if any audience member in the hearing room wishes to speak, please come up to the table um, and identify yourself. For those participating remotely, please raise your hand or speak and identify yourself. Uh, let's move on to announcements. Sure. Um, so this um, September 18th, I believe is this Saturday, um, Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will happen at the Francis Wyman School. Um, Truck Day, which is super exciting, is happening on the 19th, which is Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's on the Town Common. Um, the Burlington Housing Partnership will be holding a meeting on September 20th at 6 p.m. via WebEx. The Board of Appeals will be holding their meeting on September 21st um, at 7.30 via WebEx and, and or not via WebEx at the town in this hearing room town hall. And then town meeting is coming up fast, coming on September 27th on Monday at 7.30 p.m. And it's going to be done via webcast, via WebEx and um, on the BCAP. So be on the lookout. Great. Thank you, Liz. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, Paul Raymond. Uh, he received this uh, award for uh, 18 years of service on the recreation department. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave this here for the duration of the meeting, and you know, yeah. feel free to go to talk. I really enjoyed recreation. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. And, and our recreation has really noted every. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was recently a national survey that we did about towns outside cities and so forth. And number 10 was Burlington. And the one thing they noted was that they did really had citizens participate and noted uh, the uh, uh, Burlington Day. Yep. 
Absolutely. Was the clock? Was that? Did you show up late a lot? <laughs> No, he said, get him out of here. How are we going to do it? For all the time he spent there. That's, That's exactly. exactly. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, to any member, may, may I just note also that a lot of people don't know. They said to me, how can you be on recreation and also in the planning room? And this is the bylaw, and I think we ought to read it every once in a while because I'm sure Bill is getting an answer. Uh, it's Article 11. It says recreation commission voted. <clears throat> Town establish a recreation commission consist, consisting of one member of and designated by the planning board. So the first thing it says about recreation is one person shall be designated from the planning board. And Paul, thank you, thank you, Paul. Um, but to that point, I, I don't think people recognize a lot of. Uh, of all of us, I think, are on other committees, whether it be sculpture park committee, small cell committee. Uh, transportation, housing authority, you know, we all, we all have more than one hat. Um, you know, it's not just planning board. We're here for 2 nights a week and then, you know, we call it a wrap. Um, we're, we're very committed uh, to the town of Burlington and, and I think it shows. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, we don't have any legal notices uh, this evening. Uh, we can move on to um, our 1st item. Uh, it's item A. It's a discussion approval not required application. It's for 174 Middlesex Turnpike Norbloom Development Company Inc. is the applicant. Staff, do you have any comments regarding this item? Um, I will actually. Frank Peter is here to talk about the uh, plan, and I would like to reserve comments and thought after that explanation because I think she will probably um, say many of the things I would say. So I just can myself but I will weigh in if I'm not. welcome uh, so um, if I may Frank DiPietro with the BSC group I'm here representing the Nordblom company regarding this uh, approval not required plan and um, this is a site that has been um, permitted by the planning board for the uh, sort of lifetime athletic uh, re uh, residential facility that will likely be going to construction in the next month or so uh, if you recall, during the permitting process, there was a out parcel in the really be the um, southeast corner of the parcel, right in the corner of uh, Middlesex Turnpike and Fourth Avenue. That was going to have a small, to be determined retail building about 3,500 square feet. And in the process of going ahead with the full project, it was decided that it would be beneficial to essentially cut this piece of property off. They don't have any tenants. It's not gonna be developed in the near future. The site will be graded to match the um, sort of the rest of the site, but they wanna take this parcel off and use it in the future. It is my understanding that this parcel will still be owned by the Nordblom company, probably by a different name. So if, if you look at the history, when the parcels were developed, the ownership was put under a Northwest Park building 15 or whatever the building was, LLC. Um, the building numbers, a little secret, is the building numbers come from the order of which the buildings were built at Northwest Park. So uh, what we're looking to do is create this and our lot. It has frontage both on the um, Middlesex Turnpike and on 4th Avenue. Um, due to the proximity of any potential access on this lot to the intersection, what we're proposing is to add on an easement, an access easement that runs along the top. I can sort of see it right there. It's 31 feet wide. It is a combined access easement for pedestrians and vehicles. Uh, and what we would look to do then is to create this lot, which essentially has an area of about 2,400, 800 square feet or 0.57 acres. It the easements as a 31 feet wide. It has an area of uh, let's see, 4,412 square feet, 0.16 acres. Um, the rest of the parcel would still remain in the uh, Northwest Park uh, Building 15 LLC. As with this parcel, like I said, at some point they may change the ownership. Um, there is a wonderful graphic that I put together. Unfortunately, the people that could really uh, draw on my team weren't available. And so to try to give you a little bit of perspective, 
Uh, this is the, the apostle. Um, it's hard to see the larger piece is in fact what the entire lot is. It's a little bit of an orange. Superimposed that shaded area is the proposed uh, residential building. The shaded area also shows where the parking areas and stuff like that. The blue shaded area is in fact what the lot is. The purple shaded area is the proposed access easement. That lines up with the existing or uh, the proposed driveway that's going to be servicing the easterly part of the site. And it also includes the sidewalk. And again, the thought was people, um, wherever the use may be here, they may either drive or run, I mean, walk, they could run too, I guess, it's part of the exercise, to the site, and they want to provide access to get in. Um, be happy to answer any questions, but that's basically uh, my presentation. Great, thank you. I don't have any, uh, well, the only other comment that to clarify is that it, the creation of this lot does not make any of the existing lot or the this lot non-conforming in any way. Otherwise, we don't have any um, comments and would support the carving of the lot. Once they do get an applicant, uh, that they'll, they'll have to come back to the board as yes. well. Yeah, we were very adamant in the decision that, you know, we're not approving anything on this site now. If you want to do something later, come back to us. Great. I just want to clarify that. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments? Pretty straightforward. Um, may I have a motion? Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve and sign an approval not required plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan 174 Middlesex Turnpike in Burlington, Massachusetts County, heard by BSC Group. Dated September 14, 2021, reflecting the division of a single lot into two lots. The planning board finds that this is a proper submission of an approval not required plan because the combined lots maintain conformity in regards to lot size and the existing conforming frontage on Middlesex Turnpike and 4th Avenue. The applicant shall submit four copies and an electronic PDF of the endorsed approval not required plan to the planning board office within four weeks of this approval. Proof of recording with the registry of deeds shall be provided to the planning department upon completion. Thank you. All those in favor? Second. Oh, second. Oh, I'm Aye. sorry. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Thanks so much. Madam Chair, I make a motion to take items A through A, A through A, B together for discussion. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item A is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 6.1.1.2, expansion of a non conforming use of the zoning bylaws 207 Cambridge Street. Phase zero designs the applicant. Item B is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 4.3.2.15, storage and disposal of oils and fuels petroleum products of the zoning bylaws 207 Cambridge Street. Phase zero design is the applicant. Item C is continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 4.3.2.16, storage of hazardous and toxic materials and chemicals for retail sale of the zoning bylaws. 207 Cambridge Street Phase 0 design is the applicant. Item D is an application for approval of a site plan. 207 Cambridge Street Federal Investment Trust is the applicant. Is representing? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. I'm Thomas Murphy. I'm here on behalf of the property owner for the site plan approval. I think uh, item D, I believe. And um, <clears throat> my name is uh, Jim Kimball. I'm with Phase Zero Design with the architects for O'Reilly Auto Parts. We're representing them this evening. Could you identify the folks that are on the WebEx that are with both of you as well? Mm -hmm. So I believe we've got um, Alicia. Jocelyn, and who's with you, Alicia? Yeah, Tiffany Lawson. I usually don't get to see them in, in person since they're in Missouri. <laughs> were they? Were they? They're with O'Reilly Auto Parts. Right. Yes. And I believe also on the call is Kathy Kenton, who's um, the property is owned by a trust. The uh, trustee, the longtime owner, passed away in the spring. Two children are you now kind of stepping in. Kathy is his daughter. She lives out of state, but she's here remotely. And I also believe that the property manager who was here in person last time um, is going to be joining us, but I'll say his name. Today, yeah. Great. Thank you all for coming. 
Uh, does planning staff have any comments regarding this, these items prior to? Uh... Um, so tonight they they'll present um, a kind of draft landscape plan that and some consolidating of um, the rear site and some um, trash consolidation. Um, but really, what we want to accomplish tonight is really give direction to the applicant, both um, the applicant for the site plan, the property owner, as well as. Um, O'Reilly as to what the planning board is looking for to add to the plan um, so we can move forward with you know, plan revisions and, and just really giving a direction. Um, there we have had, as I mentioned, conversation with Kenton, the representative from the property owner, which is very good. She submitted a plan showing um, additional landscaping, which I'm sure Tom will present um, this evening. We had some initial comments. Um, we had some comments that also, um, in your staff report, kind of just bulleted some comments we had about um, some from the last time, but also, you know, the landscape planters in the front, tightening the curb. Yes, from the front. Away. Um, and then, uh, um, anyway, and consolidation of the trash in the back. Um, so, what I'd really like to do is really get a message from the planning board as to really that list, that bullet list of what we're looking for for them to add to the plan. Um, as well as, you know, I think you guys have, I know you guys have spent such time in the field, really what we're trying to accomplish in this grade um, of these sites and really get in some high value um, tenants and really activate these sites. It's an older industrial building. What can we do to really have that kind of inside out feel? Um, with um, landscaping as well as outdoor seating and activation. So, so we don't have a decision drafted for tonight. They still need to open with conservation commission on some issues, but really just want to give direction from this board as we move forward with those things. So, okay. Um, do you want to walk us through um, what you're presenting here this evening? <laughs> Let's get your point first. I would recommend we start with the property owner and um, Tom uh, or attorney Murphy. I know you had some uh, with uh, Kathy Kitten, the owner, some ideas. For sure. I think also as you're describing what you're doing, can you say who's going to be responsible for what, what item at hand? Sure. Please. Yeah. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. The um, forward electronically, and I believe that's what we're looking at here. It's going down through the um, but my client prepared a, a proposed landscape plan, um, a quote unquote red line version. Uh, okay. Figured, okay, we figured there was going to be some give and take. And so once we get to the final plan, we'll obviously get it done uh, by the engineer. Uh, but in any event, um, after listening to the board and some of the comments when we were in here last time, and also um, uh, the property owners, you know, generally understand that there had to be some uh, some things addressed on the site. We've come up with a, a proposed landscape plan, uh, which uh, creates green space along the street, similar to what's in front of the adjacent building. I think was one of the requests the last time. By the adjacent building, I mean the one that used to have Patterson's uh, strip of stores. Um, so right along the street, there'll be there'll be um, green space, and, and they propose my client proposed planting some trees. Uh, they they mentioned Cleveland pear trees, but I guess that's subject to discussion. Um, if you remember, there was to the right of the building, there was going to be a, a drainage um, depression created. Uh, there's been a problem over the years of water running down the hill. Across my client's property at out onto Cambridge Street, which creates problems, especially in the winter. Um, so, we have a proposed, um, hopefully, a solution to that problem, certainly to mitigate it. Uh, and we were before the Board of Health a week or so ago, and they approved it. With, and I, I assume their comments have been submitted by now. Yeah. Basically, it's just going to collect the runoff from the hill. Um, there's going to be a depression. Uh, there'll be an overflow pipe that'll connect with the, um, the catch basin on Cambridge Street. And hopefully, by doing that, the water will sheet across the property and go into the street. 
Um, but as part and parcel of that, it's going to require to currently on the right side of the building, there's a, there's a parking area. Visually, it looks like the same parking lot as the adjacent jewelry store. There's no separation between at the property line. Um, but the uh, four of those spaces uh, will be removed, dug up to create this basin. And then we'll, we'll also propose doing some landscaping around the front part of that basin. The uh, Board of Health, as I'm sure you, you're aware, requires some sort of uh, blocking to make sure cars don't drive into the, into the basin. So uh, they suggested the client was agreeable to, to putting boards, and then there's going to be a row of avalites between the boards and the street. So you won't see the boards if you're driving by, but you're going to be there. So there'll be some green space to the right side of the building, and, um, and, and planted in there will be a row of avalites to screen both the uh, retention area and the boards that are going to be prepared for safety reasons. Um, across the front of the building, you can see a green strip, and um, that's where the, the current front stairs are. As we discussed last time, those with, that's not really an active entrance to the building. It's, it's an emergency egress. Um, however, we can't take the steps down. But what we're proposing to do is build a raised garden on either side of the stairs on the, the, the length of the front of the building. Um, the client's proposing a couple of feet in height, but again, that's subject to discussion. Uh, and suggested various kinds of plantings of uh, trees and or uh, rails. And, uh, again, the, the type of the type of uh, planting that we when the will go with there is subject that we're we're willing to take suggestions on. But what she was uh, proposing was hydrangeas, trees, perennials, and, and some boxwoods. So that would be the front of the building. We'll have the green strip, space strip along Cambridge Street. Uh, which will be grass with um, pear trees, uh, similar to what's at the next uh, the next property over to the south. Um, there'll be a, a, a retention basin. Um, so the hot top will be removed, the retention basin will go in there, and there'll be um, some plantings around the retention basin, um, mainly amylites. And then there'll be a strip of green space across the front. It'll be a raised from the, the parking lot height, um, and then with various plantings that <clears throat> I said, uh, to be determined, but something that's typical for that type of a site. So that's the that's the bulk of the of the uh, green space at, at the front side of it. Pushing to the rear, uh, over on the left, as you can see on the screen, um, it had been some. Um, dumpsters and things of that nature over there, those will be removed from that area and that whole space will be made into green space. Um, and we're proposing planting four or five maple trees up in, up in that general vicinity. Just to the right of that, you can see a, a strip of green at the top. That's currently uh, allows um, traffic to drive through to the site behind us, which uh, creates problems for my, my client just because you have trucks going up and down his parking lot. Um, and late for the neighbors as well. So in any event, we're going to we're going to close off that to, to take that away as a point of egress to the lot behind. That lot has frontage over on the, the street is on the, on the left. Um, and so that's going to be green space. The over to the right, uh, there's going to be an enclosed area where the dumpsters we moved to, and, and they'll all be closed within that, that within that fenced in space and to, to the right of the parking area behind the. Uh, been um, various storage trailers and things of that nature up there. Uh, those have all been removed. I don't buy there tonight, actually, just to, to double check my way up here. Those have been removed. Uh, they were the property of the tenants, and we told them that they, they, they can't do that anymore. So that, uh, Madam Chair, is, is um, the proposed uh, landscaping features. It's a, a difficult site. It's um, there's not a lot of green space there. Uh, it's a large parking area and a large building. Uh, but I think this, you know, within the available um, area, does a pretty good job of trying to um, brighten up the front of the building and also has some more trees, green space, and, and some buffer to the rear of the area. Thank you. Will all that work be performed by the landowner? 
Yeah, do we have uh, additional maps? Like, um, while she's handing out, um, uh, phase zero also has some landscaping that they were proposing okay. um, along the, um, the handicap ramp, um, which I'm not sure if you want to talk about pull the plan out. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind of just on the landscaping. I can talk. No, I can talk to the landscape for this. Yeah. So as you can see on the um, left side elevation, which is facing the parking lot. Sure, I'm sorry, to, just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do we have um, a small staff or no? Um, Make them bigger. I'm not, I don't think so. My eyes are getting old, but we can have two seconds. <laughs> if we don't, we can zip in. Thank you. I'll, I'll I'm sorry to interrupt. So I should I should just back up. Is so the connection can... tonight? Yeah, you can scroll down. So as we were going through and talking with with staff um, before the first uh, hearing, which. We fielding comments on the view of the ramp and then the concrete uh, landing before the entrance, you know, because obviously this building sits up higher, so we've got a lot of exposed foundation. <clears throat> so what, one of the suggestions that we, we took was to try to put some landscaping in front of those elements, try to take the curse off of them a little bit, soften it up, um, if you will. So we were proposing to put uh, some planters um, in front of the uh, handicap ramp, uh, as you can see on the right. And then again, on the, um, the concrete stair and landing in front of the main entrance to, to the store. Is this, um, is this entrance, is that, is this exclusively, exclusively for handicap only, or is that, Will that be a main entrance? It'll be both. Um, yeah. So it's the only entrance to the store is is on the left side, which faces the parking lot. Uh, the existing handicap uh, ramp was just recently remodeled, and um, <clears throat> so we'll be uh, using that for sure. Uh, those handicap spots out in the front of the uh, the building will be maintained. So those folks needing the assistance will park there with the ramp, but. We're, we're um, anticipating most of the customers at the store will be parking out front of the building and, and using the stairs to go there. Before we, I would say probably let's have comments on the state plan itself and landscaping before we get into any of the design of the building. Um, but it's actually a question. No, no, that's, of course. Um, who wants to start at the front of the building? Does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, this, this, what we're looking at doesn't actually show the landscaping. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, so it's um, a, a little, it's a little difficult to comment. Sure. Um, can we go back to that original slide, please? Okay. That's one of the, the reasons why we want to make sure we get the list of what we want the plan to be updated because they didn't want to update the plan to then have to update it again. Um, so we have kind of the sketch drawing like this um, that we want to. And thumbs up, thumbs down, or change, and then by the next meeting we'll have it on the plan. And then we'll have more detail. I hope the next plan. Okay. But we'll need this meeting to give guidance on what we're going to do. We can go to the, the front of the building. Yeah. Thank you.
I mean, personally, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to getting more detail on the landscape plan. What we've heard sounds like it's a direction to me. I just would prefer to see a rendering in some, some more detail the next time, but I understand you couldn't do that now. Um, I like that you got rid of all of those extra dumpsters and storage units or whatever they were. Um, so I'm glad to hear that they're gone. And am I correct in understanding that then the dumpsters are going to be sort of tucked behind the building? Yes, the back behind the back right of the building towards the street, and then it'll be a, a fence all around it. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to take it back. End of the building dumpsters. Down the other end. Move the back back one. Move on. All right. So to piggyback off of uh, Barbara's question, and so moving the dumpsters in the back, is there a plan for the tenants to remove the trash? They're not just going to be outside, and uh, everything's going to be, you know, yes. methodically placed into the dumpster. We've asked them not to throw it in the parking lot. Yes, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they they've been, and we've made it very clear to them that that's not acceptable either. They don't want to make multiple. Dumpsters. They either have to find a place inside, you know, end of the day, or they could just bring it out. Can we ask the people on the phone if you're not speaking, if you could mute your mute yourself? Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so the answer to that is yes. Thank you. Point, point of clarification, if I could, uh, Attorney Murphy, uh, the rear, what you're calling the rear of the building, is that the part of the building opposite Cambridge Street, or is this where? What, what do you consider the rear of the building? Um, I would consider it the, yes, at the far end of the building, parallel to Cambridge Street. Okay. So the building, in my mind, is 80 feet wide and 300 feet long. Okay. Thank you. So I don't have any other questions or comments. I, I have a few more, but go ahead. Yeah, I just, so I guess my thing with it is, I mean, I'm looking for as much landscape as we can get. I just feel like this it's way over park, you know, there's, there's way too many parking spots. And I just don't know where the line, like I'm trying to picture the parking area to, as you're looking at it from Cambridge Street, the parking area to the left, which is actually behind, you know, partly next to the building and partly behind this building. It's hard to, to gauge, you know, how much of that is owned by this owner and how much isn't. Turning to me was, and it, and it has nothing to do with these guys, say, but it's it has to do with, as far as I'm seeing the whole site. There was, I, I drove down there the other day, and you know the, the strip where the Pattersons uh, store was. To the left, back side of that, there was a there was a rusty old uh, chain link fence. That was a brand new chain link fence. Now, a couple of things concern me that is number one, they're just making changes and they can't, they, they, they need to make, they need to come before us or, you know, talk to us or something. We, this is all part of a site plan that just keeps on, you know, they just keep doing what they want to do without even consulting the boards that they're supposed to be consulting with. Right. So it's, it, so if this is, the building runs this way. Yeah. So the fence runs from the back of the from the back left side of the building to Terry Ave. Oh, okay. And then and then it goes back. So it goes to Terry Ave and then okay. shoots back. Now one problem that they just do this stuff without going through the proper channels. It's another problem that we're trying to create connectivity and walking. What they did with that was they literally, they have parking behind this building and there's no gate. They, 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 they fenced it completely off. So you couldn't even park behind the building if you wanted. You'd have to walk all the way down the end of the building around and come this way instead of just walking right into this building. So they've cut off any kind of, you know, pedestrian or parking behind the building, forcing parking in front of the building or over to the sides or some other place that's more convenient because they've shut off any kind of a 
connection to the to the buildings from the parking behind it. And that's that's not owned by Face Era, correct? No, uh, just to just to be clear, that's not that property that you're talking about is not part of what we're. Okay. That, that's an adjacent property, right? Maybe the Patterson Strip, right. right? I know it's an adjacent, but it's it's owned by the same owner, and we need to be looking at this whole thing together because it's how can we address this? I, I understand, you know, it really has nothing to do with you guys. I'm just, my but conversation is more owner. with the board right now to say. Is it the same owner? Is, is it's the same owner. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know that. I thought yeah. we were talking yeah. about it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's all part, it should be yeah. part of the same realty trust. It is. Okay. But it's it's not part of this particular. No. So it's not and okay. also just for the, but for the owner's problem. But if the, the owner yeah. just keeps doing stuff that they, you they know, what, that they didn't have permission for or authority to do. So I feel like this is a great opportunity, you know, that, that we can let's focus on this and then, you know, uh, the owner is here right. so that they're hearing us. Yep. And, you know, and we're, we're in the board. Right. We need to have multiple conversations, not just about O'Reilly, but, you know, let, let's focus on O'Reilly and then we'll yep. go back to the owner. So, and, you know, maybe that could be a discussion point next time we speak with, with yep. the owner directly. Is that fair? Yeah, well, she's here tonight, right? Yeah. And, and, and just so the board knows, we, we've heard a lot of this I, again my clients are just kind of getting into the picture here and, and so they're getting up to speed sure. um, the intent is that they're in, and they've already commissioned their, their surveyor and engineer to prepare a site plan for the adjacent site so that we can come before you similar to this I mean this is triggered by O'Reilly coming in so mm -hmm. so that's that's why we're getting try try to get that done now um, we don't have a similar tenant looking to come in next door that's that's but we're going to voluntarily put a site plan together and come before you and address some of the things that Mr. Incumbent just brought up. So I guess the only reason why I'm bringing is is more the, the, my concerns with the site are number one is there's no green space. So as much green as you can create in the front, on the sides. My my second concern is it's kind of mayhem in the parking area. This there is there are no drive aisles. It, it's we need to. I would like to see because I'm hoping that it's steady. I'm, I'm hoping and expecting that it it becomes a busy location for O'Reilly. Uh, and and if that's the case, we're going to be seeing a lot more vehicle traffic going on in there. As it is right now, that whole sea of parking to the left of this building is is complete mayhem. I, I've never seen a car drive through there and use a drive aisle. I see them drive right over the. Their, their drive aisle is basically the parking spots. They just, they just drive over the parking spots and go out any way they can. I'd like to see some defined drive aisles in there, maybe using some curbing and some islands that could also incorporate some trees and some landscaping. Um, and then I'd like to see roof lines. I, you know, they, their logo on the front of the building that's you know, it's certainly an upgrade from what I, what exists now, but I would like to see some gable roof lines or something that, you know, gives you a, more of a colonial feel like that. You know, you know that front can you can incorporate a gable, you know, kind of a, you know, gable roof line peak over there, a yeah. peak over that, and then maybe on the front and create some peaks and some you know some facades, some roof facades, I guess. Um, you know, that would really dress up the building a lot. Um, it's it's really a, you know, it's a big building and I know there's, a, there's, you know, it's hard to really fancy up a building that big, but we can start by having some roof line to it, I guess, and uh, creating that type of thing. But those are the big concerns, aside from the, you know, the drainage, which I think you're, you're addressing, you know, I think, and that, and that would be, a, that would be a big plus because I know in the winter time it literally freezes on three A over there. Yeah. Really dangerous situation. Sure. I just wanted to make one remark if I could, Madam Chair. Um, I think Joe made the, the, the comment that it's it's way over parked. Um, there is a parking chart space calculation on the on the site plan that the engineer put together. I had speed it's requires eighty three spaces and there are ninety two spaces totally existing now. We're taking four out already with the um, drainage um, facility over to the right. So that's gonna bring us down to 88. So we're 
if you if you apply that uh, the parking bylaws were not over packed, we just would you yeah. Just I mean, the right there. problem is, and this is the problem becomes the same issue we had with you know all of the banks that created locations in the downtown. They 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 told us they needed the spots and that they complied with the loan. We said you know we'd like to see the spots reduced because the reality is we've seen over the years that those types of things you know they. They never really draw the kind of car traffic. We're trying to create pedestrian traffic, trying to eliminate or lower the car kind of traffic. Um, so I, I mean, my my gut feeling is, you know, there was a, there was a an auto parts store there before, and I used to use it all the time. And I'd go down there, and ninety, I I would venture to say over ninety five percent of the spots were vacant, at all the time. And that tends to be the case with an auto pass store. People will drive in and drive out. You know, they're not driving in and hanging out and shopping there. And then, you know, more people are just showing up and shopping. It's not really a... I don't disagree with that, but there are other tenants in the building, including a restaurant and a market. Right. And there's a karate studio, which I assume has classes and things like that. So so there are other uses there. It's not just... The uses have been there. And, you know, and, and so when I, when I say I've gauged it by... You know, being down there and using it, and to be honest with you, I drive down there. I'll just drive down there because I know we've got a couple of open tries, and, we, and this is something we've been really liking, you know, wanting, and you know, chomping at the bit to kind of address because it's really, it's an unfortunate circumstance. The whole thing with that whole industrial area in the center of town, and and being the gateway to you know residents and people back here. So it's very sensitive for that reason, and I. I periodically go through and just try to say, okay, what what can we do? Or what you know, even before your application came forward, I'd put on there to say, well, what what can we do, and how can we create a more appealing, you know, uh, gateway for the, for the people that live down there. Well, if you from what you said, when you reduce the ninety two, you're going to reduce it down to eighty eight. You're required to have eighty three. Is that right? Eighty three, according to the calcs on the. So that gives you some play that you could create you could get rid of some parking spaces and create islands to help break up that sea of pavement and be nice right because i think you know if i don't I, I i i'm willing to bet that you guys don't frequent there at night but you know be, being a resident and knowing the area quite well there are a lot of people that speed right through that restaurant leave the restaurant and then you know and come fair you know between you know um the, I can't remember the name of the new halal, Hello. the new halal um, establishment and, and the auto supply building. Um, and you'll find that there's a lot of police presence in that space because people slip through that, that area. So, you know, adding the islands or some speed control, whether it be you know, speed bumps of some sort, I think might be ideal, um, you know, to have a, a maybe a tamer presence there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd be happy to discuss that with the client. You know, again, the only things on the face of it that I'm concerned about is we go below the required parking. We're going to need some sort of you know permission from you folks, which I'm guessing you'd be happy to give. Yeah. But the other, but the other factor is that um, I also got to, from my client standpoint, they have to have enough parking available for tenants. And I don't necessarily disagree with you, Joe, that maybe it's not as heavily used as it as it. Maybe could be, but if you get a couple of different tenants in there, that might be different. So, and then all of a sudden we've got a parking problem. So it's always a fine line between what not enough and too much. It's funny that the you know, and I only brought the building next door up for that for that reason. It's just the way they've fenced it off. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not even aware of that. I mean, nobody parks there. There's no comment. It makes it so inconvenient to park there. You literally have to. If you were to park where you know in that whole that whole building has parking behind it, which I assume is is owned by this that by that building. No, not a single car parks there. Maybe the people that work there maybe can go in the back door of the place, or something like that. But I'm I'm not sure how much of that is. I think some of it is that it's an adjacent property. But, but I, but right. That I, I I haven't really researched over there, but I've I, seen it, a couple. It, of it, it's the fence actually goes right to the. So it, the fence actually encompasses that parking area, and I would assume the fence was done by, you know, your, that same the owners of, of the same building. Right. But so, so the point is, 
you've got a lot of hockey in there that's yeah. really that nobody uses and nobody will ever use. So those are types of things. Maybe we look at. I, I'd like to really gauge how much parking you you think is necessary there, and then by putting islands in and creating dry vials, we're going to create a, such a safer environment for everybody to be able to do business down there. As even restaurants, which quite honestly look like I'd love to see some of the restaurants have some outdoor seating and some things like that. Right. Well, to attorney uh, Murphy's point, or uh, you know, the new owner is just kind of you know getting her feet wet with. The with the property and she's going to put together a, you know a site plan and they're going to bring it back to us so let, let's give her some time to do that she'll bring it back to us you know we're we're having conversations right now with both this property and then then again with that property and um you know hopefully we can come to a meeting of the minds and, and get that interconnectivity that we're right well you were asking our opinions and that was my opinion but that those are some of the things i would like Absolutely. to see so if other people have things they would like to see them. Absolutely. I definitely think islands with trees or something to break up that sea of pavement. And and I also think that it might be a good idea to put some speed bumps in because mm -hmm. people do just sort of escape and, they, and they're they not staying in the drive aisles at all. No, <laughs> or yeah. actually speed humps, which they have over yes. on the pro yep, yep. property over there, creates a, a much better environment and yep. it gives you a, a crosswalk kind of thing. That's true. You can create you make them into crosswalks. Cross those are nice. Um, Mike, did you have anything you wanted to add? Oh, I'm good, Madam Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? I think that's it. Um, to add to Joe's, yeah, just to support Joe's uh, comment about uh, the roof line, I would also like to see that. You know, again, we're we're really trying to support a you know a more colonial style in town center. Um, so if that's something that that you could um, take a look at, I'd appreciate that as well. Gentlemen, do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Not really. I'm listening to all the comments. And it's kind of free for all, really. I'm a, senior, <laughs> I, no, I'm, a, I'm a senior citizen, so I just drive up to the steps. <laughs> you know. Right. It's almost like there is no defined parking and no really right. no defined drive right. aisle. So it's like you park and drive wherever you want to down there, and that <laughs> is really an issue that you know I would I would have been kind of chomping the bit to try to address all along and. You know, this is kind of our first opportunity with the, you know, with the owner being present at the meetings and, you know, being able to hear what's going on. Because, to be honest with you, you know, the first meeting we had with that property manager, the manager, you know, snapped at us and said, "There's pride of ownership on that." Really? Why don't you ask the neighbors who live live there and look at it all the time? How how much pride of ownership they've had over the years, right? And I'm not trying to bash. I'm just trying to say, mm -hmm. I, I I just feel like the there's a disconnect between the owners and, and I understand the circumstances. This, this owner is now taken over and sure. really, you know, needs to, you know, dig her feet in, but she also should, you know, hear the, hear the, the grievances, the issues, the concerns, all of that stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't want to hold, you know, this isn't meant to hold up an application because I, I feel like the application just needs to keep moving forward, but some of the things that we'd like to see addressed, I'd like to at least have some acknowledgement that, you know, people are on board with it. Right? I just wanted to ask, have we resolved the issue with condensers on the other side, on the right side of the building and the noise problems? Yes. So um, the property owners have provided us with a, um, a detailed plan of what they are planning to but it's basically a, 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 a facade with bricks and other sound bins in it. Um, so, but I wanted to make sure that they have that to the details of the site plan. So we'll see that on the next round. Yes. Thank you. Um, I had, uh, I don't know if it's possible, but with, with other properties, uh, when uh, we have thought there's too much parking, but the owner doesn't want to give up his right to the parking spaces, we've asked them to uh, put the, what is agreed uh, as excess parking into green space, but still leave it on the plan as parking spaces. I know parking spaces and buildings uh, go together. And it's a, you know, if you change tenants, you might need more parking spaces, but if you don't need them now, Picking, picking up the house up and, and putting some grass or, or landscaping in there might might make a lot of sense. 
So, and then they could be could be converted to parking if necessary later. Right, to hold them into the yeah. We've done it with big commercial buildings a lot uh, mm -hmm. up on um, uh, in in the wayside area. Uh, that's one thing I had. The other thing I was wondering about is this site is uh, obviously uh, that, that we talk about the freezing in front of uh, in front of the building during the winter time. And a lot of that water, and correct me, staff, if I'm wrong, is actually coming from Woodcrest Ave. No, some of it. Some of it. Uh, I know uh, this may not be a popular thing to say, but is the town going to step up and put some drainage there so it doesn't drain onto somebody else's property? Or does staff know about that? Any discussion at DCM meetings or what? We have brought it up. We have brought it up. With the engineering department, they um, they are they are looking at it, but they're not able to come to any conclusion or anything like that. Okay, but they're they're more than aware of the problem, and they're going to try and give us some. Yes. Because if I was a landowner there, I yes, I'd be upset if the town was dumping property on my 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 property, and I'm glad that this property owner is is willing to. Step up and get the uh, permits from DOT to, to tie into uh, the King Street storm system and put the uh, retention area there because I think that's going to help in a big way. But I think the town should also be able to do that. Uh, other than that, the uh, yeah, there was some discussion on the uh, the soundproofing. There'll be details from the sound. Can, can Eddie have it? I don't know if you want. I mean, they're kind of more architectural. Details of that. Would you let I can put it out? Does the staff satisfy with them? Uh, yes. So we can just a little bit more detail on what okay, they so are. Why don't we wait until we get that here? Uh, other than that, I'm all set right now. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, is it a, is there a second for O'Reilly to just kind of interject and kind of give our thoughts and opinions if you're willing to hear that or if you guys have time? If we have time, let's just have the board finish up and then we'll we'll circle okay. back to you. Thank okay, you. Okay, perfect. I was just gonna say if you go down Terry Avenue, keep going straight. You go into a parking lot. If you go down to the end of that parking lot, there's a huge, it must be five feet. Uh it it, it drops off. It's obviously all filled with it there. It was filled for parking. And and it goes very steep off there. And there's a huge pipe. Things out there, and that's why when they talk about this water all going yeah. down Main Street and so forth, that there's a there's a pipe that must be five feet comes out right there into a wetlands, and the wetlands comes from Fairfax also into that area, and that keeps going straight under Bedford Street. You know, when you come down Bedford, the water goes there and underneath, and then it goes down and takes a, a right behind the church. It hits directly into our welfare. You're talking at the end of Northern Bitten's parking lot, all the way down straight down there, yeah? Yeah, if it goes, keep going down street, there's a park, big parking that's more to the left. But if you keep going in that parking lot, you, Terry Ave ends supposedly where the sidewalks were, yeah, so right. with, but it's all paved there. Right, and if you just keep going straight and, mm -hmm. and take a look, you'll see that, of course, that was all filled. And there's this huge pipe that comes out there. And since I'm interested in wetlands, I just wandered around down there. And you can look over and see Fairfax. And Fairfax, it, you know, collects water behind it. And it all collects there. And it goes under Bedford Street. When you come around the corner by the church, there's a pipe that goes under there. And it goes back, back through there into wetlands. And then it takes a right hand turn in behind all those houses and everything. And you can see it go under Sandy Brook and those roads that go down. If you go down those roads, you see the, the pipe going in there. And that's where this water goes uh, to the into the wealthy. I don't know if that if there's any particular impact as far as this uh, project is concerned, but uh, I certainly would hope. The town engineers and so forth uh, uh, look into that. Thank you. I'm doing some investigating. <laughs> for yes, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm making sure. You can kayak down that pipe. <laughs> I put it <laughs> Going back to Ernest. No, no, I, I didn't kayak anymore because I can't get back in. <laughs> Going back to Ernie's point about having, a, you know, the more green space and then reserving the spaces. You know, there's five spaces that you weren't taking back that I think that would be great to make all green. And I'd be willing to forego the balance if that was all green space, personally. Um, and, you know, and and reserve, you know, reserve the right to take it back if you need. And then if you need to take it back, then maybe we put the balance back in. But um, I think it would be a lot prettier without balance. So you're talking about like the front between Tents of Simon, right? The side, all the way to the curb. Uh -huh. All the way up the side. Well, the board, the board of health requested something that they mentioned balance. Um, so we've got to put something there to satisfy them. Um, their suggestion, which is what we kind of followed up on, was if you put the balance right next to the retention area and then you put a line of abovites between them and the, and the street, you wouldn't even see the balance from the street. That would be ideal. So the abovites will, will screen those and it also add some trees and trees. But, so wait, just to clarify, um, Madam Chair. So this is the area in terms of time and the time and of little planters, but yeah. the whole parking area or uh, part of it will be cleaned up toward the back, but really take it from there to the sidewalk. Yeah, that would be great. I think it would look amazing and it would really bring in, you know, you could have events out there. You could, uh, I, I think it, it might be something to think about. Um, but I, I did, um, State that the O'Reilly folks would have some time to speak. Did you have something that you wanted to share with us, folks? Yeah, we just wanted to be sure that everyone was aware that we are more than willing to um, get rid of some parking stalls if it works with the property owner, um, especially at the front of the building. Um, the people that are coming to the store that uh, are going to be parking. We're, we're, we want to make sure we have all of the required ADA parking stalls, um, but that's really the only parking that we plan to have on that um, Cambridge Street facing the side. Um, so any other parking that's not required, if the property owner is content with it, we're more than happy for that to all be landscaping. Um, and as far as the raised beds, I mean, we're fine with all of that. Um, and I think we're, we're making every effort that we can to dress this building up, um, as far as putting that El Dorado decorative stone along the wainscoat, um, adding the pilasters and adding those, um, bump ups. I think our, from, from a structural standpoint, our biggest concern is by adding, um, peaks. We're going to be really messing with that wind load and the snow load. Um, if we're, if we're adding much more than what, what we're showing right now. So if there's any leniency, we can get on that. We would really appreciate it because, um, we don't know a ton about the structure of this building and that kind of starts to blur the lines between O'Reilly and landlord, which I know is not, that's not your problem. Um, but it just makes things a little bit neater and cleaner. Um, if O'Reilly is able to make our portion look nice and neat and as beautiful as we can. Um, and I think our, we're just wanting to make sure like we're focusing on the O'Reilly portion of this building as far as uh, the visual upgrades go. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and I think we had an updated elevation, but I'm not, it doesn't, um, I know at the last meeting there were some uh, questions about the tinting and what we could do to maybe alleviate that mirror finish. Um, we did come up with some options for that, and I know Jim's team put together a really beautiful rendering. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if we're able to share our screen so you could see that, but um, it does. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, to our um, online permitting site. Um, I'm not sure that would, um, Jim, yeah, Jim would know all of that. Um, I, I think that, yeah, we gave it the green light. So I, I think that it was intended to be uploaded. It might've ran short on time. Um, it might not have gotten uploaded, but if it didn't, I, we're sorry about that. I don't have it. Okay. 
Okay, um, and it's it's not a ton different than um, what is shown here, but the the way the glass is rendered, you can tell um, at the front of the building. Uh, well, sorry, it's it's the left side of the building um, where the O'Reilly showroom is. It's it's more clear that you're going to be able to actually see into the store, into the building, and then on the um, other portions of uh, glass storefront um, it's a little more clear it's not it's not mirror finish it's um it's just more of a, a transparency you know it's so it's not as easy to see in but it's not the mirror reflection um and we did update the overhead door and that man door um to make them a little more decorative and less uh industrial um so i just wanted to let you guys know we really are trying as hard as we can to take all of your concerns into consideration. And um, I think the only uh, leniency we're hoping to get is, is the, the peaks um, on this existing structure. Um, and I don't know if that's up for debate or if, you know, it is what it is, um, but that's just our, our thoughts on it. I think I, I would familiarize yourself with the building and see if it's something that you can do. And if you can't, then it's a discussion point, I think, you know, but, um, you know, we're, we're really trying to focus on, you know, beautifying this area. And, and I think we've heard more than just that just me say that, you know, it would be nice to see. So if you can make it happen, I think it would be ideal. If you can't, again, you know, it's a discussion point, but I don't want to right out of the gate say, oh, you know, we'll negotiate. Just okay. take a look at it. Take a yeah, look at it. Let's as talk. far as as far as that goes, is just more of a parapet what you're looking for? Or are you looking for um, like a, a new roof structure? No, no, no. It, no it's just basically a gable pediment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It could be a it's a parapet. Own, you know, that really have nothing to do with the roof itself. The mm -hmm. snow load is on the flat roof. This this will have nothing to do with the flat. Problem. Roof. The problem with that, that, with all due respect, once we start going about two feet, it, the snow will drift. And sit there, and we'll and it'll be in sitting on two different points of, of the building. That's because that was our concern. The, the first thing we we looked at when we saw the um, the guidelines was I was drawn cables, cable pediments because because that was part of the guidelines. But then as I start to get into it, it's used, it's probably about eight feet to the peak from the existing parapet. And so once you start putting that kind of height at that kind of width. The amount of snow that's going to be sitting there is going to be substantial. So that's what you were kind of leery about doing because we probably would have to reinforce probably 25 to 30% of that roof to make that work. I mean, you could have, you could build it such that, you know, the support of it was would deflect the snow, right? I mean, you could go to, you know, Build the back of it so that the supports are coming to point and the snow would deflect. It's yeah, well, right. We would put not caught up. In, uh, we would we would definitely cricket it, but it still would sit. It still would sit. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, people do that all over the place. Yeah, I mean, but you, that do that all. I mean, down in Crossroads, it's happening right now. Right, it? but but those are newer buildings. And this is an existing. Uh, so so that they designed for that. You know, when we design uh, new buildings with with those kind of uh, pediments. We will definitely put in the right structure to support. It's actually a retrofit. It's it's a it's an existing crossroads has been there for years and years and years, and they they are now putting a you know the, pro uh, so the problem might be part of it is even for deflection of you know they they didn't want to go too high because the sound would you know we could we could look at it and definitely yeah. try to be creative too. Other other things that you know I've done in, in, in my past is. Is to project it off the building so that the snow doesn't build up there. We could look at something like that, but that's um, let us let us let us look at it. We'll look at um, the existing building and take an honest assessment as to what that capabilities are, and and look at maybe some other options. We, we understand what it is in your guidelines, and we, we were making every effort to to meet meet them with this building. Thank you, thank you. It's it's very much appreciated. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm older, right? Uh, I, I just happened to uh, I I looked at this on Google Earth, and I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? I can see. 
Okay. Yes. For, for everyone else who can't see. Can see if my eyes were better. If this was all my glasses here, John. Uh, the, uh, unless this perspective is way off, that's a large amount of space between yes. the just diamond and the building. And yes. if that was to be green, that would be a huge impact. It? It, would be, it, would, it would look amazing. It yeah. look amazing. And it doesn't, nobody's going to park there. Right, so so for the folks at home who can't see, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Mr. Mignogna's screen, he's basically showing uh, a Google Earth uh, photo between um, from what what was the old firm to not supply. Yep, that's exactly yep, what that's yeah, Thank you. Um, and actually, I'm I'm on the same wavelength as Ernie. Also, from if I'm understanding O'Reilly correctly, what they're telling us is that they want to maintain all of the. ADA parking in the front, mm -hmm. but there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of space between that parking and the street to also be yeah. right. And I think right. that would that would be a game changer on what this mm -hmm. property looks like. And it's, I would imagine that green space is less expensive than repaving, um, mm -hmm. and it would, it would just make it look so much better. And Brenda and Joe probably aren't going to like me saying this, but I would be more interested, I would be willing to trade peaks for that much green space. Yeah, I think if it's possible, it would be a discussion. <laughs> it would be a discussion. And no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade you for that one. Uh, does anyone else on the board have any questions, comments? Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any comments on this item? I always just want to note that we have um, we have discussed. The noise we've discussed trash we've discussed many other things we're looking to move forward so if there's anything about this line or things that they would like to see those are the comments that i'm looking for hi this mrs walker hi mrs walker hi i did hear you mention of the compressors um now who is responsible for putting the barriers up the owner or the um tenant i know it has nothing to do with o'reilly um the tenant is doing it the owner is requiring him to do it and will oversee the work and we've requested back up from their architect that the board did, did ask for more detail we're just aware of that. okay is there is there any guarantee that they will actually do it um so i know that we as the board we are going to kind of require that that be placed on the site plan as a detail so um if this you know if if the site plan isn't built to what's on if it's not built out the way it's supposed to according to what was approved here um mm -hmm. you know there won't be building permits that will be issued and there won't be certificate of occupancy is um, okay. so if it, it you know the details we're requiring that so that it, it happens okay no i mean the only reason why i'm asking too is because of the letter that i turned in that was 30 years old and not one thing on that letter was ever done and you know i was just wondering what guarantee would have that it would be done that's all and that also pertained to the water issue mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think i think that here you're hearing us now that we're, this is definitely a focal point that that we're going to be concentrating on. So it will be on the site plan, and um, you know we'll, we'll make sure it happens for you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions or comments they would like to make? So then I'm going to. Um... May I have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Of yeah. course. But would you please come to the? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Kathy O'Neill, 31 Athletes Ave. Thanks for letting me speak. I think from what I've heard from the woman from O'Reilly, sounds very encouraging. I've spoken to Jim. He also sounds very encouraging. I think O'Reilly is going to be an excellent tenant and an excellent neighbor. But again, I have to go back to the history that's been there. I understand it's under somebody new is taking over. Uh, somebody passed away from the owner, so my apologies to the family. Um, I guess that's a good thing that somebody new is going to be coming in and having a vision and the energy to, to follow this up and make sure that things are being done correctly. My fear is almost similar to what um, the last woman spoke about, Debbie. Again, I'm going to go back to NBM. I was here when they came before you for the special permit. 
They got everything they wanted. They finished their renovation. And the building is worse now than it was before. They've done zero of what this board required them to do. Zero. I drive down there now and where you were talking about, Paul, NBM parking lot, you go straight through. Yep. Never before did I see pallets out there. But now that they have the um, special permit and that bigger addition, you drive straight down there, what do you see? 30 pallets thrown all over the place. It's a mess. And it used to be a great building. They really took care of it. My concern is also with this building. Who is going to enforce these things? I don't trust any of them. I, I hope, I love to hear, I don't, don't compromise on the vision of the town center. We talked about the peaks for how many years? They should do both. They should do the green space and the peaks. It's in the guidelines, they know that. So why would we compromise? We compromise on everything. This cannot be the eyesore of Burlington anymore. We need to really dig in and make a stand. I'm all in favor of the enforcement officer as well. I hope we can do everything we can to get O'Reilly in there, but I think the property owner needs to step up. It's unacceptable, and I don't trust that they're going to do what they say they're going to do based on history. may not be fair, but that's the reality. So my question is, if they don't do some of these things that they said they're going to do, what, what do we do? In other words, with an NBM, what are we doing to them? They're in there over a year now. They've done nothing. So what's being done about it? I think that to answer your question, I think this is different because these people need a certificate of occupancy before they can move in. Well, they do too. They did too. So I think I think that yeah, you know, I can understand uh, concern. Yeah. Right? And I'll tell you, it's not just me. I'm the one who comes to the meetings because we know how long this is going to go on. Yeah. I could bring many, many people here with us to show you how upset we are about all this. A house across the street was on the market. Twenty-seven groups went through. Nine of them made comments about the mess down there. What kind of an impact do you think that had on the value of that property? And how many of them thought of it? Didn't and how many of them didn't say anything because they were too polite? For, yeah. So I hope, and I try, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but I hope that this board stands united and strong and keeps the vision of the town center in mind and does not compromise and make sure that we have some sort of a guarantee and I still would like an answer about what's going to happen with NBM because it's been years since they've been in there. I would like to talk. I think we need to talk about that. Maybe. And they, they took it. They got away with it. It's basically what happened. They did what they wanted to do and they thumbed their nose at everyone else. And we drive by it every single day. And now we have to look at pallets on top of that. And Chair, could we maybe ask um, to have a, a separate meeting with staff specifically about that property? And I was going to say that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah let's, thank you. I guess I visit over there, um, see what's going on, let's get some pictures. I'd like to also add about uh, Bay State, I think is the name of it. I called there myself. I was extremely nice. And I asked them all, the woman who answered the phone, the pallets are a mess, the house is on the market. I live in the neighborhood. I don't like driving by and seeing it. Please, is there any way you could ask somebody to move the pallets to the back? Well, it's two weeks now. They haven't moved. I called the building inspector, John. Didn't get much of a response from him either. So I just, I think it was brought up uh, by you, Michael, about the zoning enforcement. I think that's an idea that you people should should follow as well. Oh, absolutely. We're, but I, I'm sorry to get off topic. Uh, I really, it's it's completely topic. Understand. so just to give you a, a little bit of, you know, Hope, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if you drove through town center two weeks ago and it looked like it was better sign central. It was hideous. We sent letters to every single uh, property owner. There, most of them throughout town are gone. I did notice that. It's funny you should bring it up. So I did notice that. We are, we are, we're on it. We're committed. Right. You know, while I, I can't say, you know, we have a magic wand and everything's going to change over, overnight. I understand. Yeah. You know, well, it's been 30 years. So I don't expect it to change. I've only been on the board for a couple of years. Absolutely. <laughs> and I believe the intentions of this board are excellent. You, you all work so hard. I believe the intentions of O'Reilly are excellent. It's the property owner that I think needs to be held accountable. And I don't think anyone should get another special permit in that area unless there's some sort of, and I don't even know what that guarantee is, but they shouldn't be allowed to hang a sign without complying to the visions of this town center. Well, which comes to the question, and that's the question I want to ask staff, actually. How, how do they get an occupancy certificate if they're not complete? 
where they complete and then they're non-compliant after the fact. No. Which is that? No, they never. No, they never finished the site work on, okay. on that northern business. The building is done. And the, and the site. Think about what we talked about. Be done with the lamps, the, the lighting, yeah. and the walks. All that stuff. It's just enough now, guys. We we need you to no, help us. Didn't they do? Anything? Well, they were supposed to put a sidewalk, lights, trees, shrubberies. There's None nothing. Of None of it's there. Not not a thing. Like literally, not a single thing. Except they finished their building and they moved in immediately. Did they get a, and, I don't really understand don't until that's done. But I think we should probably. I actually well, I have a separate meeting, and we need to get the answer to that question. But I right. think. It's not really, yeah, this, this isn't really O'Reilly's burden. I agree with you, and I apologize for taking time from that, but it, it's it's convoluted almost. It's just so, so many of them. I think we should do that, and I, I hope, I know you'll come. I will. Yes. We'll have that meeting, and I think probably we need to have somebody from building there. Agreed. And again, just before you issue any special permits, please, we don't have to ha know that what they're saying is going to be done will, in fact, be done. It can't be afterwards. It has to be. Now we don't want to hold another business hostage. Yeah, you know, we, we want to make sure that they're be, they're going to be able to thrive and they're going to be able to move. I agree. O'Reilly is, you know, they're here in front of us again. We have a new property or a, a new older uh, that's that's spearheading, you know, this this property and the development of the property. So I think, you know, first and foremost, let's go back to MBM and the base state. Let's pull, you know, the, the plans, figure out what they didn't comply with, and let's have a meeting about. But again, I, I don't want to hold O'Reilly hostage. I completely yeah. agree. As long as they're going to do what they say they're going to do. I agree. I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. I just want to apologize for your comments. We Thank need you. those reminders. Exactly. We don't live in those neighborhoods. We need we need to hear. We so appreciate that you come, take the time out. Thank you. Care, you listen, you speak to us. We need that push to make sure we do our jobs. Because Absolutely. We were elected for you, so we appreciate every single word about whatever you whatever is bothering you. Thank you. Parts of the town. So. Don't think you're a bother or anything. That's what we're here for. I That's what we're So I appreciate your comment. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. I have a question. Sure. And that is, since the ultimately the building inspector has to be to occupy, and is there any way that we can communicate with? Because the people come to us because we're doing a permit and a board, sure. but we don't have the ability to not approve the project if it hasn't been completed. So is there is there, is there any way and, and there's no specific enforcement officer, is there? No, no it's time. Not, that's what we're yeah. pushing for. Yeah. So it, it can, should, should we sometime get together? I am going to have a, a you know a meeting uh the building department or whoever and and say this is an issue that uh, comes up continuously to us. Right. And there's something missing in the process between our approval of the plan and what gets built and approved. Right. So, I, again, I think that, you know, staff, if staff can support us, and somebody could go over and take, you know, take a look at what the site plan was, see, see where we're falling short at that property, and then we can, you know, we can um, stimulate that discussion with the building inspector. So, just um, if I may, um, just for this specifically, this is critically why um, uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts and the site plan are linked together, and we're talking about them together um, because it is tricky for these older sites and older buildings that have businesses in them. Um, you know where those catches are. So. That's why they are on purpose. We're talking about it all together. That's why O'Reilly um, continued until August to start those conversations to let their site plan catch up. Um, so we can have them as kind of a package that go in together for O'Reilly to come in together and open and have all this work get completed. Um, and have the property owner organize the other tenants and what they're doing and how we end so we can understand who's doing what, when they're doing it, and Make sure that it's all tied to one thing. Um, process question for this for any property. And we've we've gone through and we have all these conditions, and the building department is the one who gives them the certificate of occupancy. Do we wait before that happens? Do they come to us so that we can verify that things were done the way they were supposed to be done? 
Yes. Does it 100% all the time? Not all the time, but that's kind of where it fell down. Our, our, where we are, we push for every time. Because we have, I mean, we carry a lot of other department conditions. We carry Board of Health, right. we carry right. um, engineering department, and we carry a whole bunch of our own conditions. So um, we always have said that we're the second to last, the building's right. last, and we're second to last. To try to make that's a else. process discussion we have to have with building. Yeah, we've had that conversation, and I've had that conversation with Mark quite a bit. Um, sure. So I think things are on the, I mean, things are in a good place. It's just, can I say 100%? Forever have they always gone down that road? That's the intention that things the way things should happen. I have a motion, please. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to continue this matter, these matters to the planning board meeting of October 7th, 2021. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much for coming everyone this evening. Thank you for your patience. We will get through this and we look forward to you all joining the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm actually going to really nicely. I think so. It's going to make a big difference. I think it's going to look great. Um, let's talk about meeting minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to review them? Yes. yes. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th, 2021 and the uh, minutes of September 2nd, 2021. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, I have a second. Oh, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. One abstent. Okay. Um, what was the vote? I'm sorry. It was um, five, five zero, zero one. one. Okay. Uh, next up is a discussion point. So, um, I think we, we had talked about the select board's transportation committee, and it's my understanding that we're going to hold tight uh, or we're going to sit tight until after town meeting. Um, so I think we'll just sit tight on that discussion until after town meeting and we'll go from there. Um, related to that, yes, is my appointment to the select partnership to free up Ernie, right? Right. right. Okay. So we're going to wait on that. Yep. We'll, okay. we'll take all that at the okay. same time. And then, was there any? You, you could. Vote and then just have it be effective at a later time. Fine with that too. Is there scheduling meeting? It's actually a recommendation to the town administrator, as I understand it, and then he makes the appointment. But okay, so um, since I call the town administrator, no, <laughs> you're taking my, up too much time. My comments are short. <laughs> and cheers. I, I that clock says otherwise. <laughs> You're all holding me up. There's <laughs> <laughs> always in the newspaper, it says if you need transportation here, medical, medical, and so forth, and other things. And so I don't, I, there's something like this should be integrated with that because the problem is the senior citizens, you know, and, and if they don't have whatever transportation is. But apparently it says to contact the person who's in charge of the uh, uh, human services building. Uh, Marge McDonald? Yeah. Are they a COA director? Yeah. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. But, but they should be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your presence. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just kind of. Okay, putting it together. Okay. All right. Well, I would like to appoint Barbara on the transportation committee. No, no, no I'm sorry. <laughs> Ernie on the transportation committee. Excuse me. Uh, effective. What is town meeting? Twice. Effective. Yeah, the end of the month. Say October first. Effective October first, and I would like to appoint Barbara to the housing committee. Effective October first. I accept. Thank you. <laughs> I, I do well. So I, I, I still intend to attend as many housing partnership committee meetings as I can. I just don't want to be obligated to do that if I can avoid doing right. other things. I understand. Because that committee is really moving. Good. Good. So I've been there 30 years, and this is the, this is the most. Okay. So do we need to ask the town administrator to formalize this now? Okay. Do I need to do that? What's no, well, uh, they've been they've they've been asking us, and I okay. you know, so they okay. so I relay it. Okay, great. Um, but that's why it, it's it's good to vote, and sure. they can.
they could put it on there next week. Great. Um, Barbara, do you have any updates that you'd like to share about the sculpture park? I do not at this time, but I do expect to have one at our next meeting mm -hmm. because we have things in the works. Awesome. But you did have the unveiling. On oh, yeah. I, I, I will say the unveiling went wonderfully. We had a nice crowd. I think the new sculpture is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of comments on it. Oh, and one other thing. This is not really planned by the Burlington Sculpture Park. It's more um, through the town clerk. We've been informed that in a couple of weeks, there's going to be a wedding at the Sculpture Park. It's fun. Really? Fun. I think it was inspired by the new Love Bird Sculpture Park, but I don't know. How <laughs> I love it. Um, we don't have any correspondence. Uh, oh, she did not have any reports. Subcommittee reports, unfinished business, new business. May I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Madam Chair, can I make one comment? No. <laughs> Uh, I was fortunate enough to attend the uh, town's uh, memorial for September 11th, and I just wanted to give a nice hat tip to Bob Ryan and everyone involved in putting that together because it was a really uh, moving ceremony, and there was a great crowd out there. And um, I went to high school with Matt Fortini, his brother, his Ryan Fortini, is the one who passed away from 9-11 um, related Ill cancer illnesses, and the Fortinis were very moved with um, this, the what they did with the monument, the uh, improvements to the monument. Adding Ryan to the uh, to the monument and the the ceremony as a whole. So to select board member Hogan and everyone, the uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs and everyone involved, uh, just a great job. It was a great day for the town and uh, a uh, a worthwhile remembrance for the twenty year um, commemoration of nine eleven. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Good job. Motion to adjourn. So can I say one more oh, thing? It's too early to adjourn. Come on. Um, <laughs> the, as a planning, I'm newer, so I'm going to just post As a planning board, we can go to town meeting and ask for the funds for zoning enforcement officer, right? I think so. Yeah. We can put forth a, a motion uh, or a, a, a warrant article. We can put that together. Did, oh, did we miss the vote on that? No, I'm talking about for January. For January. <laughs> so the authority <laughs> is lies with the building department, right? So, right. so really, it's it, it's got to be a joint initiative, but it's really a building department thing. Yeah. We don't have authority to do that. It should be a we combination can. because that's really, we've yeah. talked about tonight about why it becomes a problem because it's really right. our, you know, uh, conditions that are, that are, that are supposed to be enforced. Right. Um, Personally, and I think it should be somebody with a dual report into building and planning. So it I think that, you know, we had that to the agenda when we're finished. Any town meeting member can put forward an issue, and I do. Can we? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. As a town department, I think we can. As a town. Yeah. So I can do that for January. Well, we can, but I the think point, it's something we should point is this. Much. Because I would think it would, you, you, you should discuss it with building. Well, it should be yeah. the yeah. authority, right. so we can't. But, but, you can't have that, that's gonna, building, but I think we need to. But I think that's going to tie into bring it back. Yeah. Let's look at, you know, base state right. and the you know, yeah, and then say, oh, what are we doing wrong here and how are we going to fix it? And I think that this is all going to be that part of that same conversation. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> all those in favor. All right. Let's say Opposed. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. Evenly. <laughs> Can I say something? Oh, Barbara. It's 490. Yes.